Hi, this is Jessica Lopez. Um, I'm gonna do a video on how to complete the ISLO assignment for the fall 2021 semester. Um, so in your course, you should find a page called the ISLO assignment flat or dash fall 2021. Once you click on this page um, and your instructors will give you information on how to access the page, but once you've clicked on the page, you'll see the directions here. Um, and it goes on to explain that every student enrolled in a college level math class is required to complete this assignment. And the assignment is not tied to a specific math course. It just tests um, general skills that you have acquired while taking a math course, okay? And the general skills that it's um, trying to test for is critical thinking and reasoning communication and empirical and quantitative skills, okay? Um, so critical thinking is gonna be based on your reasoning, communication is going to be based on how well you write, and then the empirical and quantitative are gonna be based on your calculations, whether you are able to um, complete the calculations for this uh, assignment correctly. So it says, make sure that you have the following items, that you know your instructor's first name and last name, you know your banner ID, and you know the CRN number, the course number, and the section number. These are all going to be important bits of information that you need to fill out the form. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll click on step one, and we'll read through all of this information. You may want to take notes um, as far as on a piece of paper, writing down the little bits of information. So that way, um, when you get to step four, you do not have to come back to step one, okay? Although you can, and I'll show you how once we get to step four. But step one is just reading over the scenario and understanding um, what is there. I don't wanna read through all of it exactly word for word, um, but in step one contains your scenario, okay? This is what you're about to, um, use to complete out the form. So step two is basically just the rubrics, like how are we going to score whether or not you have empirical and quantitative um, uh, competency. So these are the things that we're looking for if you are a skillful person in these kinds of skills, um, or if you're an emerging person, meaning the skill, you're starting to gain those skills, you may not be at the uh, maximum retention of these skills, but but you are starting to demonstrate an understanding of these skills. And then of course, there's non-demonstrated. So you basically wanna see what not to do, where you should be on track, and then exactly what they're gonna to wanna to see from you in your responses for this um, assignment, okay? And then we also have the same thing for critical thinking. It is worth reading all of this information so that you know exactly what the um, graders are looking for when they go to grade the ISLO assignments um, later in the semester. Um, so step three will be the video. Um, right now it just says embed video here because that's the video that I'm currently recording. Once um, this video is uploaded, then I will be able to embed that video there. So you will see a video here. Um, most likely the video that you've already clicked on. Um, step four is the actual form that you need to complete to complete the assignment. And so in this form, you'll notice that it requires those bits of information that it mentioned you needed to have earlier in advance. So for me, I'm gonna type in my name. Um, I'm gonna type in not my banner ID, but a general banner ID. And then I'll type in my email. And then my math course, I do need to know what course it is. So if I was taking a 1414 uh, course and my section was 186 and my CRN number, I don't know what it is. I'll just type in a generic CRN number. But you do need to know specifically your banner ID, your math course number, your section number, and your specific CRN number that goes to that math course and section. Um, then, of course, you need to select your um, instructor. Now, you do need to know their first and last name because 
even myself, Jessica Lopez, there's another Jessica in here. So you definitely want to make sure that you have the correct first name and last name. Um, there's multiple Gonzalez's, multiple Guerra's. So definitely make sure that you have both the first and last name of your instructor. I'll just select myself as the instructor because this is only for training purposes. Um, here's where you will input all of your calculations. So this is where we're gonna test those empirical and quantitative um, skills. Now, in order for you to type in um, the information, you may need to go back to step one to review. Um, so if I go scroll up, notice I can still click step one and review this information in case I didn't jot it down and take notes or I um, forgot a number or just wanna verify that my numbers are correct. You can go back to step one, but then eventually you do need to click back on step four to continue completing this form. Um, in here, you will want to type all of your calculations. So you may have done all of your calculations on paper. You want to make sure that you type them in here properly. And you also want to make sure that you're following your orders of operations. So if you're trying to tell the reader that you multiplied eight times nine first and then added three, use parentheses to represent that that calculation needs to be done first, okay? Which is different from um, eight, oops, eight times nine plus three, right? Because here I'm telling the reader that um, I wanted to add the nine and the three first before I multiplied by the eight, okay? So definitely take advantage of the parentheses to tell the reader which calculation you performed first, second, or last. You can also do things such as, um, for instance, if I wanted to do eight times nine first, I could write 72, and then in the next line do 72 plus three, right? Or if I wanted to add the nine and the three first, then I wanted to take the 12 and multiply it by the eight. I could do that, okay? So you can write it all in one line, all the steps, or you can write the steps separately. It's completely up to you on how you convey um, the operations that you performed. However, you do need to show how you get the numbers that you get by showing us the operations you took to get those values, okay? Don't just say great cars is gonna cost $10,000. You need to show how you calculated that $10,000, okay? Um, so you can use parentheses. Notice that in order for you to hit the minus sign, you're going to hit the key that's next to the zero, which has a minus sign. If you wanna hit the equals, it's the key next to the backspace. If you want the plus, you have to hit shift and then the button with the equal sign and it will pop up the plus sign. Um, division sign should be next to your bottom right shift button, but it just looks like this, a little uh, fraction bar. You could also use the one underneath the backspace, which looks like that. Both of them will convey division um, just fine. Once you enter all of your calculations for great cars, do the same for best auto and then cop for choppers and then finally happy motors. So you have all your computations for each individual place um, before you start moving on to your critical thinking and communication section. So this is where based on your calculations, you're gonna provide um, a paragraph um, here explaining what exactly you would tell your friend um, to consider when choosing um, their vehicle, right? And please include why. I mean, that's the whole point behind the communication and the critical thinking is not just what you would advise them, but why you would advise them that, okay? So you would just say, I would advise my friend to dot, 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 or you can start your sentence off any other way. Um, but you would continue and write that whole paragraph out. I'm not going to type anything in there. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but you would type all of that and then you would hit submit once you're done with all of your computations and all of your um, paragraph part. When you finish with that, uh, you should be able to get an email confirming um, that you finished the form. So notice that here, uh, and this was my practice run, which is why it's there. Um, 
but you would notice that everything is in here. So it tells them which course I completed, who the instructor was, what time everything was submitted, um, and where the um, quiz was located. Okay, so it does give you a confirmation email. Um, if you had put more computations in a big paragraph, it would have had a summary of all your computations, computations and a summary of your paragraph in here as well. So it is like a completed um, form that you'll get this email. It'll show everything that was inputted. I only filled in the box with the paragraph. So that's all that pops up for me. But other than that, once you click that submit button, you are done with your um, ISLO assignment. And that's all there is to it. So I hope this video helps and good luck, y'all.